Welcome to the Waste of Web Space podcast, episode 62. Starring Jimbo and Fisher. And yeah, uh, we've entitled this episode, We'll Meet Again, Probably on Zoom. We'll meet again, probably online on Zoom again, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. There you go. So that was We'll Meet Again, um, probably on Zoom. Oh, online on Zoom again, and I've entitled obviously because it's been VE Day, and uh, you'll notice that I am reusing last week's David Bowie Ziggy Stardust wig, and um, because obviously for Will Meet Again, I've decided to come dressed as uh, you know the sort of nation's sweetheart, um, Dame Edna, of course, <laughs> who sang that song. I th- I thought you would come as Elton John in all honesty with those glasses. Okay. Um, you know what your slight problem there is that yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't Dame Edna Everidge who sang that. Was it not? No, it was Dame Vera Lynn, who is 103 years old or 102 years old. So Dame Edna's got nothing to do with it? Different Dame, different Dame. Oh, right, Fact, okay. I'm, I'm led to believe Dame Edna Everidge might not actually be an actual Dame. Oh, right, okay. And there are rumours that she is just a man dressed up as her. Well, at least that's accurate then. Well, yeah, you've been doing, doing it pretty well, to be fair. Right, okay, I'll, I'll not bother with the rest of it then. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, that that's apology of the week sorted for next week then, I suppose. Okay. So, so what's, what's been going on, Jimba? Well, uh, yeah. Um, we, well, first of all, let's, let's do a bit of what happened last week then. So we did our um, podcast that was all about rocks last week, didn't we? Well, well, it wasn't all about it, but we featured rocks. Yeah. We, we featured the rocks, yeah, the Chapel Town sort of rocks and and so on. Um, but yeah, we, we we did any rocks get found? We, we I didn't think so until until just this morning, and you've sent me something to say that our rocks the, have been found, or one of them has. The, Joss Stone was found. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, the rock Joss Stone as opposed to actually Joss Stone, but the the rock that you wrote Joss Stone on and and you know dumped in in public, which uh, technically dumped. speaking should have been. Yeah, well, technically speaking, you should actually be done for littering, but uh, yeah, the council's <laughs> been a bit lax at the moment because they're not allowed out. So you're allowed to do this. Just realised um, I've still got the glasses on. Yeah. Take your glasses off, Jimbo. <laughs> um, so because of that, um, uh, so, someone posted on the chapel, not just on the Rocks group, on the entire Chapel Town Ecclesfield High Green Grenoside Forum on Facebook, however many members that's got, about finding that, uh, that, that particular rock. And you know what they did? They posted the upside saying Joss Stone. They didn't bother on the underside where it said Waste of Web Space Podcast, but you, know, you can't have everything, can you? Well, we, we, we tried, didn't we? We tried. We did. Um, but anyway, how, how has it all been going for you? Everything okay? Obviously, we're still socially distancing. Um, expecting to be doing that for quite a while now, but how's things going? Uh, things are going all right. Uh, I, I've got a, a new listener uh, to our podcast. We've got Steve, Karen and Ethan have been listening in. Um, and they've said, actually possibly Isabel as well, I, I don't know. She's not been mentioned in the listenership, but... Um, Certainly the other three have. Um, and Steve got in touch to say that he was friends with, or is friends with, Aston Villa's mascot. Ah, um, okay. So we mentioned mascots previously. We had the mascot quiz, didn't we? Yeah. Um, it's his friend, Gav, or Gaz, I can't remember which. So I'm going to have to check through my phone for film messages. It's his friend, Gav, who is Aston Villa mascot. He responded to a paper in the local, uh, responded to an advert in the local paper and decided, and has been mascot since then, by the sounds of it. Well, I, I um, wouldn't, so I wonder what, what their, their mascot is, to be honest. I'm not sure. That, that That's not featured in our previous quiz, has it, the Aston Villa mascot? I'm not 100% sure um, what it is. I think it did. I think, didn't, didn't you have something about him gyrating against a goalpost? Ah. Or, or sort of doing some kind of dance against Miss Aston Villa? <laughs> is, um, this, is this the previous person who played the, the Villa mascot, though? Or is this the, the same person? Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, I know that in I know that they put something on Facebook in 2008 with him in the mascot costume. Uh, well, that is a long time. So yeah, it, it may be the same person. Then who knows? He's got. I think he's dressed as some kind of lion. We we did. Uh, that, is it Rory? Or is that the England? Uh, I can't remember. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find I out. Just, 
I suspect Steve is now going to get in touch and tell us everything we need to know about <laughs> Aston Villa's mascot. So if I do my research, then uh, we won't we won't need him to. Well, but that, that's been one thing I've been doing. I've also well, been well, before involved... we, before we move forward. Speaking of doing research for your mascots, that's something that pointless BBC's pointless didn't do because um, so we 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 did a mascot quiz, didn't we? A few pod, uh, a few yep. episodes back, and then surprisingly, it managed. It was the case that. It then featured that there was a, a mascot themed question on the chase only a week later that starred Barney the Owl or Barney Owl, of course, who's a good friend of mine. And uh, so, so that was on on the chase. And then a couple of weeks after that, it appeared on Pointless as well. Although Pointless got it completely wrong, and they put a picture of Barney Owl up, but labelled it Ozzy Owl or Ozzy the Owl, which is even worse. Ozzy the Owl, yeah. So which is wrong because his name's Ozzy Owl and not Ozzy the Owl. So. Aside from the fact they put the wrong picture up and got his name wrong, I think they did a really good job. It's, in, it's important to get your mascot facts right, though, isn't it? Yeah. No no wonder it was a close to being a pointless answer. <laughs> You're going to confuse everyone. <laughs> Actually, do, you know, do you know how many it scored? Um, I think Barney got about... Was it 37, something like that? I don't know. I, I, no? I, I don't know. If I knew the answer, I wouldn't have asked you a question. Well, they, yeah. Okay. Um so I've I've been up to I'm I'm undertaking a writing challenge as well. Um, so I'm reviewing previous games of cricket that our, our club has played over his, in in their history. Um, we've only been going sort of as as a new club since 2014, so we've had six seasons. So I'm going back past through previous dates, picking out matches we've played and uh, putting down the details and putting them on Facebook. Uh, in the first week, I think I've written about six and a half thousand words detailing games. I think twelve games we've played in. I also did a, a short, short review of the Second World War and VE Day, um, and it's good fun. I'm getting a bit annoyed by people who are doing um, some lockdown challenges, are doing it for a little bit and then giving up. I mean, uh, Gary Barlow, for example, he was doing his um, singing, what was it called? The Corona Sessions. Oh, sorry, the Crooner Sessions. Yeah, is that where he kind of, because of where he's got his keyboard and where he's singing, does it look a little bit like he's always riding a horse? Yeah. He's <laughs> just always a little bit like that, and it looks really well, odd. Like he's, it looks like he's a typist from a 1940s. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, it, look, it, looks, it does look a bit strange and a bit odd, and he sings alongside someone else who's on the other side of the video. Um, but he, he stopped doing that now after like 40 odd days. Jimmy Carr had been doing his big, big fat quiz of the lockdown, or little tiny quiz of the lockdown. He stopped that after about five or six weeks. So I'm going to carry on doing it. Yeah, go now, with it. It might be the case that I've tied myself into doing another 130 or 40 days, but I'll do it. Good, good on because you. And, and to be honest, most, most of the stuff that I'm writing is a load of rubbish. Um, but nonetheless, there's some artistic merit in <laughs> doing something that badly for that long. Yeah. I would say. Uh, and also, I took part in a quiz myself. Yes. Have, have you done any online quizzes? Uh, I do a weekly on one. I'm, I'm, uh, we're doing an interesting one tonight, so we always take it in turns to do a quiz each. Um, but because we had the feeling that maybe this week might have been, you know, it might have been maybe the last one under the current lockdown rules although it looks like that might be extended anyway again um yeah. we decided that we're going to do five questions each so we've all got a different round to do each so we've all got to be quiz master in the same week so that's that that's for me good, to yeah. do tonight i'm on i'm on tv and film okay um i don't know if you want to well obviously you're not going to test the questions out on me in advance um, no, i've not got them ready yet so i've only just right, prepared well, for this podcast for sure well good point yeah well Good point, well made. Um, <laughs> see, I, I did a quiz on Friday night, and do you know what, Jimbo? I was robbed. I was right. robbed of a point. Um, the question was, Henry VIII had two of his wives beheaded. One of them was Anne Boleyn. Can you name the other one? Now, for my answer, I put, no, we can't name the other one. <laughs> which, which I thought was right. You know, yeah, true. Uh, it's true. Technically correct. Yeah. And uh, it, I, I, we weren't given the point for it, which I, I thought was very, very uh, unfair and unfortunate. This point, yeah, you, 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 you'd only answered the question. So, yeah. Exactly. Anyway, um, did you enjoy VE Day as well? Uh, it was very good, uh, very enjoyable. It was Catherine Howard, by the way, actually. His, his oh, fifth right, wife, okay. I think, was also, also beheaded. Um, I did enjoy VE Day. How about yourself? Did you go out to a street party? Uh, there was a uh, there was there was parties happening on the street, but to, to be completely honest, they all have the party on the front because uh, they haven't got a southwest facing garden like I have. So I decided right. to stay on my back garden where the sun was, whereas everybody else decided to go on the front. So okay. not that I was being antisocial, but you know, 
got kids and stuff. So yeah, no, understand. Um, on our little cul-de-sac, there was a bit of a there was a socially distant street party uh, where we kept sort of at least two meters away from each other yeah. at all times and had, had a bit of a chat. But I actually lived next to a couple of um, neighbours who were into their 80s, so they remember VE Day at the time. So but there was sort of one, I think one of them was about five, the other one was about seven, and uh, it was interesting just hearing some memories of the day. Um, yeah, it was quite uh, quite good. Yeah. Um, some people weren't quite as socially distanced, so they were down at the bottom of the road having a game of beer pong. <laughs> so, yeah. my, all those my, things, one of my friends who lives in the Romarsh area um, said to me, and he's not lived on that estate for very long. In fact, it's quite a new estate. Uh, but he said to me, you know what? I think the, the way people have, uh, are going with all this and putting all the banners up and they're all on the streets making food and, you know, having a good time and everything, I think we're going to we're gonna end up, like, in years' time, like one of those photographs that people look back on. And I said to him, is that because they haven't got black, uh, they haven't got colour colour cameras yet in uh, in Romarsh? And they'll, <laughs> they'll be looking back at still black and white photographs because they're still on the old cameras. But anyway... Yeah. Um, this has been a long intro. Should we move on? Let's move on. And I suppose we better get on with his drinks because uh, I'm thirsty. And uh, what have you got this week, Fisher? Uh, I've got some Samuel Adams Boston Lager. Now we try and get stuff that's local, so I don't. I don't actually know whether this is Boston in Lincolnshire or whether it's Boston, Massachusetts. Um, it looks very much like it is the well, it's Samuel Adams Brewery. It's bottled in Faversham in Kent. Um, yeah, that's all I really know about it. But Good. Boston beer, yeah. Well, um, someone, someone who knows a bit more about beer than me might get in touch and tell me something interesting <laughs> about it. So, uh, it. It does refer to itself as an American lager, so I'm guessing it's Boston, Massachusetts. Well, oh well, it's, it's, it's beer. That's all, that's, all that's, that's all that matters at the minute. We've got to get hold of what we can. Haven't we? Yeah. So just get, we'll just get on with. But what I, I, mine is actually accidentally quite local. Actually, I didn't think it was. I just kind of picked up interesting titles just to try whatever I could. I'm still on the can stuff. But this is life and death. So our our message to everybody is obviously take the coronavirus uh, government guidelines very seriously, which we'll discuss right. later on. They're a matter of life and death. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm drinking right now. Uh, it's it's let- impressive stuff to my. It's, it's impressive to kind of. Be able to merge that into just one can of beer, isn't it? I know, it, really? yeah. Does it does it mean I don't know what I'm gonna get? Am I gonna am I gonna either spring to life and have a really energetic episode, maybe go out and do uh, you know, a marathon straight after this, or am I just gonna sort of drop dead as if it's poison or something? Is it a bit like is it like <laughs> Russian roulette or something? Um but this is actually um brewed and canned by Vocation Brewery uh in Hebden Bridge. So not too far away at all. Yeah. It's Hebden Bridge is it something to has been in the centre of the country, Hebden Bridge? Potentially, yeah. Are, I've, I've heard something about it sort of being a something to do with the, it should be the capital of Britain, or there is something about it that makes it a very, very central point within the UK. Right. Okay. Uh, Samuel Adams, by the way, was a political philosopher who's one of the fa- founding fathers of the United States, and he was a, a, politica- a politician in colonial Massachusetts, Good. and uh, a leader of, of part of what became the American Revolution. Good to know. So there we go. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to be um, silly and. And, and and a rebel like last week and drink straight from the can. I'm going to be more sensible and start having it back in a glass. So, uh, likewise, I'm going to go for the the glass method. Uh, oh, I can see that your glass there is uh, is is it a panda? Is it, that is, it is a panda. Regular mention of pandas. It seems to become our mascot, doesn't it? The panda. So there we go. Uh, yeah, I don't take, think that, take that one, Barney Owl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's my show and tell, Fisher. Are you ready for show and tell? Uh, so, it panda mug or? No, it's not the panda mug. Um, it, that that would have been a good one, but no, it's not. My show and tell this week is you'll be able to see him on my iPad screen. Uh, that is a picture, If uh, in case so you have an audio description, that is a picture of Philip Schofield. It is a picture of Philip Schofield. This is my show and tell item. So Now, are tw- you about to bring out a bit of a revelation here, Jim? Yeah, 22 years ago, I bumped into Philip. No. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Uh, so, my, my two... Reasons for for bringing Phil and Schofield to as my as show and tell to my uh, to this feature this week are, uh, and I'll just give you a brief bit of detail. And it's up to you to quiz me more about them. Number one reason is that at work um, when I first started one of my first jobs, um, which was at Barnsley College, so when I was twenty one years old, um, I was obviously quite still quite young then, fresh out of university and so on, and uh, I was also quite gullible as well, or, or, or you know, not that they Sorry. were trying to have me on, but were. 
yeah, I, I'm still am, I suppose. But yeah, um, so they, I was, I've been working there maybe a week or two, and they saw this, and they, they they started all sort of fussing a little bit because they were having a visit from uh, Phil Schofield, and I I didn't know because obviously I was new, I didn't know what they were on about. I just heard everybody going, oh yeah, we've we've got to get this all ready for Phil Schofield. He's coming, and uh, you know he's not been for a while since. And I, I just, for some strange reason, I had in my head that it was actually the Philip Schofield from this morning. From the TV, ITV, Philip Schofield, who at the time probably would have been presenting the Cube and all that, that he was coming to the college, okay? Because not so long before that, they had somebody else famous come and do some cutting of the turf or something like that for the new building. So I just got in my head that this was a normal thing and that I thought Phil Schofield was coming. And I think people heard me saying to them, uh, I'm going into too much detail here, but uh, people heard me saying to them, um, they they heard me saying to them, um, like, so Phil Schofield's coming in. They they didn't re- they didn't think that in my head I had this celebrity Phil Schofield. They thought I meant the Phil Schofield that they knew, which was like one of the the director principals of of a network of colleges or something like that. So that's that's what one of the reasons. Reason number two is that Phil Schofield once read out my email on this morning. Okay. I realise uh, I've given any, you more any... detail on number one there, but you can quiz me more. Yeah. So obviously. There are no questions to ask on number one because you seem to have described absolutely yeah, everything. I didn't mean to do what, that, but anyway. What interests me, um, I mean, it very, very much is show and tell. It's definitely not um, question and answer, is it? So it's, I suppose my question is, why are you calling him Phil Schofield and not Philip Schofield? Because, because Phil Schofield is what I was told. And I just I just went with, you know, that's that was, the, that was how they sort of talked about Phil Schofield, the assistant principal director of Network of Colleges or whatever it were. So this, the, this, so, so obviously that is a case of mistaken identity, isn't it? So you thought it was this morning presenter Philip Schofield. It, instead, it was someone with the same name who possibly yep. referred to himself as Phil, yep. not Philip, and he just happened to have the same name as the presenter from this morning. And people went along with it when they realised what mistake I was making and decided it was a good idea, especially being the new boy, to continue with the old joke. Yeah, um, and she so said. Yeah. So presumably they said, you know, unfortunately, Fern Britain can't be with him today <laughs> and all that sort of stuff and various other things. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and for years, been... for years, John Leslie used to come and uh, come to college, yeah. but we decided it's not appropriate anymore after what happened. <laughs> and, and it's, it's not the first time I've made a mistake like that, because also when I started working at the Warncliffe Arms in the Burn Cross area, um, yeah. people would talk in, about uh, David Dickinson, who lives nearby. And uh, uh, yes. And he's an, he's an actual real person in, in Chapel Town, but I, I automatically presumed... I think David Dickinson has got Yorkshire. He's from Yorkshire, isn't he? The, the, the actual bargain hunt, David Dickinson, is he from Yorkshire? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Or me. Um, but anyway. But I do know. I do certainly know the David Dickinson that you're talking about. Yeah. So I, I, again, made the same, a similar sort of mistake, thinking that the, the, the real David Dickinson from TV's bargain hunt and Dickinson's real deal came into that pub. So it's not the first time I've made a mistake like that one. You know, he didn't really present bargain for very long, David Dickinson. No? No, he uh, d- d- didn't do it for long at all. And yet that's still kind of, if you said to someone, what programme does David Dickinson present? I bet they'd say bargain and not <laughs> David Dickinson's real deal, which he's done for a lot longer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to, just, to, just to throw that out to you. Uh, so the second one was obviously that Bill Schofield, as you called him again, yeah. suggesting that you're on sort of friendly terms with Philip Schofield, as is more commonly known. Commonly known, he read out your email on this morning. You did, yes. Uh, so what? What was? What was? The, what did the email say? I suppose is the question. They they were doing a feature about old TV shows and what they'd like to see back on the telly. And, and you said, "I want David Dickinson back <laughs> presenting Bargain Hunt, didn't you? Get him out of the Warncliffe, get him back on yeah. TV." On Bargain Hunt, Dickinson's Real Deal's not a patch on that, anyway. No, um, it was, it, I emailed in because they were doing a feature about what would they like to see back on the telly. So my comments on email um, were that I wanted to see Noel's House Party back on the telly, which I was a huge fan of growing up. Did anyone during that segment email him to say that they want to see Gordon the Gopher back on TV? <laughs> Do you think he was sat there thinking, come on, <laughs> someone say Gordon the Gopher, someone say Gordon the Gopher? Possibly, yeah. Oh. Noel's house party? Are you <laughs> kidding me? What is wrong with you? Um, so, are, are you a big Noel's house party fan? Uh, I am a big Noel's house party fan. Big fan. Uh, was it a serious 
email, I suppose, or were you just sort of trying to wind him up a little bit? Or... No, I, I, I actually thought I wanted to see no. So I can't, I, you know, I was probably maybe at college at the time, mm-hmm. um, or or at university. I can't remember which, but yeah, I was obviously watching this morning TV, and uh, that was one of the questions. And I thought, yeah, I would, I would like to see Bargain Hunt back on the telly. Uh, not Bargain Hunt, sorry, Noel's House Party back on the telly. Okay, so why did why did you do it? Did, did someone put you up to it? Email. Were you trying to impress no, people? I just wanted to. I just wanted to tell them, just off my own back. Annoyingly, my name wasn't read out. It was just sort of a off the cuff comment made by uh, Phil Schofield saying someone's email saying they'd want Noel's house party back on the TV. So I don't know what kind of relationship he's got with, it, but he kind of pulled a bit of a face at it. So I don't know whether whether there's anything any beef there between Noel and. Uh, and Phil Schofield. Um, I don't, how, how do you know it was your email and not someone else's email well, that just it, happened? To exactly. Me? I just I just presumed that because of the way they'd made it out that not no one else had got into a asking for Noel's house party to come back on that maybe it was my yeah. email. To be fair, I mean, if you've watched Noel's house party, you, I think it is understandable that there would probably only be one person who would actually want it back on telly and not sort of come a, on. a was, huge mass of people. It was brilliant. It, uh, Give it, me it, that it was, over Ant Index Saturday night takeaway any day. It's it's a similar kind of program, isn't it? Really, sort of that and, and uh, Michael McIntyre's big show, yeah. those kind of things bring bring a bit of variety. It's, it's very difficult to do, to be fair. Yeah. So you have kind of pre watershed Saturday night trying to appeal to the masses. It's, it's very much similar into the way that mm. we are, I suppose. But um, if they did bring it back, no, the... no would actually have even more of a crinkly bottom. Hey, of course. Um... He's a lot older now, isn't he? But he looks well for his age. One of those people that you wouldn't be, wouldn't know how old he were. Didn't he lose a load of money to a scam from Lloyd's Bank? Did he? A few years ago, yeah. Oh, yeah um, okay. I think he, I think he got paid out a fair amount. I'll I'll find details for the next podcast. <laughs> but, uh, there we go. Um, obviously, no disrespect there to either Lloyd's Bank or Noel Edmonds if that story <laughs> turns out to be completely untrue. Um, I do apologise in advance. That's why we have um, our feature apology of the week, just in case anything like that we, we make mistakes. You know, like like saying that celebrities have died when they haven't, and so on. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that you need to do. Uh, so I think, I'm, I'm going to give you an answer, I think that you got confused between Phil Schofield, the person who was director or sort of a visitor to your university, uh, to your college, who was just a normal run-of-the-day, uh, run-of-the-mill person. You got confused between him and Philip Schofield, the presenter of this morning. No. Nope. Wasn't that at all? Uh, so I have made that mistake before with with David Dickinson, but uh, not with Phil Schofield, Philip Schofield. And yeah, my email was read out on this morning, and I just remembered uh, the other day because, you know, because of all the the, the mention the references to House Party because of the new the app that people were using right, when, yeah. during lockdown and so on. Well, that kind of reminded me of of the fact that my email got read out by Phil Schofield, and I can't remember who he was with at the time. Maybe it was Fern Britain. I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, there you go. So that that's that's the answer. Okay, well done, fantastic. I suppose it was it was marred though, wasn't it? Because shortly after, um, shortly after you sent your email in, Eamon Home jumped on this morning and started complaining about the uh, latest <laughs> mobile phone signals, and he sent that email via a three G phone, and, and, and you know, people, I'm, I'm not very happy with that. <laughs> so. When did you last check your balls? When did you last go outside for a quiet rummage and a rearrange? Thieves are operating in the area and are particularly targeting garden sheds for balls of all varieties. Tennis balls, cricket balls, footballs, rugby eggs, and even egg balls, although Yvette Cooper's shed is now highly surveillanced. So remember to check your balls regularly. Keep them secure. And if you're into badminton, check your cocks too. I guess we are on to your little feature, aren't we, Fisher? What have we got? Uh, we are. I, we do this every time, don't we? Yeah. Are we not going to go through joke we should have done last week? Oh, yeah, go and, on then. And headline yeah. of the week. Yeah, yeah, go on then. Well, we've not got an apology of the week, so you, you, you can do that just now. Apologise for apologize. Getting, getting the order wrong again, even though we did we did discuss it beforehand and try and do this properly. I apologise yep. for that. So, thank you, Jimbo. Apology accepted. I apologise if we got a sort of a bit of a blip in sound just then because I threw my shuttlecock. After you mentioned, um, <laughs> uh, I just hit my microphone with it. 
We've not even mentioned the new... Uh, we've got rid of the pop filters, haven't we? Yeah, so you, you might see that uh, we, we have not got our pop filters in the way anymore. Um, mainly because, you know, it'd be better audio-wise if we kept them on to stop the p p p quite as much. See? It would be better. Um, but they obviously cover our face quite a lot. And also, have you seen the news about the hornets that, are, that have, have come into the country? About the um, dangerous hornets? I have, yes. So, so we've got, like, fly swatters as well now. We can use them for that rather than pop filters. So for now, we'll, we'll go with this. But, yeah, how do you, do you like mine, Fisher? Uh, yours is blue, yeah. Mine is pink. So, obviously, you were in charge of doing the purchasing there and uh, you left that on my doorstep a few days ago. So thank you very much for that. Although, you, you did give me another colour as well. You gave me purple. So... <laughs> what other colours have you got? Yeah, I've got I've got the uh, I've got the blue, I've got the black, the grey, you know. Dull masculine colours. You're, you're the one who wears flowery shirts for sure. Well this shirt is a Yorkshire shirt actually. It's got some I think it's got some white roses on it. Alright, okay, Don't fair it? enough. Is it is it strobing by the way? No, it's not, it's fine. Is it not? Yeah, good. Um so obviously that, that that was apology of the week. Um I suppose actually a couple more apologies. Steve who got in touch with me said that my West Midlands accent was terrible. <laughs> um, and also, he said that Adrian Childs is not from Birmingham, is from West Bromwich. Right, okay. Uh, so, there we go. I do apologise for not effectively knowing our television presenters that well. But that said, um, I, 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 when I was talking about Adrian Childs, you weren't actually talking about Adrian Childs, a TV presenter, were you, Jimbo? You were talking about Adrian <laughs> Childs, who owns a car spare shop. <laughs> in the centre of Birmingham, exactly. therefore it's in Birmingham. So it's just another case of mistaken identity that, that yeah. we got involved in there. Um, so headline of the week. Okay. And I managed to find this earlier. Headline, it's from uh, a funeral director's, which is called William Houghton, or William Horton's Funeral Directors. And they've got a nice sign up in the window. It says, thank you, NHS, and a love heart. Um but the slight problem is I don't quite know whether or not they are saying thanks to all the fine work that people are doing at the NHS or whether as funeral directors they are thanking the NHS for passing them a load of trade recently. Well, it, it could be either, I suppose. Um, um, I think but then again, they, the they might be losing trade because a lot, you know, some of the stuff, that, you know, like the, the, they, can't, they can't provide the same service, can they? So they're kind of doing, you know, quite stripped back services now, aren't they? So... Not 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 the car hire and stuff anymore. They're having to, people having to travel in their own cars. Uh, well, I think I think they still need a car to carry the coffin in. I mean, yeah, they don't just sort of. I don't, yeah, I don't think you can get around it in that. The boot. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you say sorry. You got socially distanced. Uh, good news is the person who you're carrying is more than two meters long. So uh, <laughs> get yourself on the inside of the coffin. You got to carry it yourself and drop it in the ground. So I think they are doing certain things, but obviously it is it is very very different uh, nowadays. Um, so that's that was that uh, joke we should have done last week. Actually, to be fair, I've skipped out of order slightly because I did Headline of the Week before Joke We Should Have Done Last Week. So it's time to go do Joke We Should Have Done Last Week. And you know what? I've not got one from last week. I've got one from two weeks ago. Well, that's not the, is, the, the, ti- the title of this section isn't Joke We Should Have Done from the last episode before the last episode. Well, it goes back to the music quiz that Dom did. And there were no songs by Dr. Hook. Oh, yeah. If you're a fan of Dr. Hook, mm-hmm. uh, very, very fine country, uh, country musician. Uh, there were no songs by Dr. Hook. And I, was, I should have said, or you should have said, anyone can obviously jump in with this joke and say, how come there was no songs by Dr. Hook? Is he too busy having been recalled to work in a hospital? <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm glad I didn't do that joke by the sound of it. <laughs> That's gone down fairly flat. Well, did, uh, did, was Dr. I was just trying to remind myself, what did, did Doc, was Dr. Hook the one who did Sylvia's mother? Sylvia's, uh, I, I beg your pardon. He, he sang about her, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that that might be... I'm glad I got that right anyway. I was just trying to remind myself which song was it that uh, I'm, I'm definitely aware of. I think it was Sylvia's mother, but yeah. Uh, so anyway, you've got something lined up, haven't you? Uh, I have. I've got a quiz about biscuits. Um, so I've been asked at work to put together a, a quiz about biscuits, so I thought I'd trial it on you first. Well, they surely know what they're doing. What was that, sorry, Jim? Uh, are they sure that you sure they knew what they were doing when they asked you? Is it the case that nobody else will do it? Uh, well, I've not actually given them the final output, so I suspect I won't get asked again, but at least, at least <laughs> if you do it once, then, yeah, I've, I've got myself in there. Um, now, as I say, I don't quite know exactly how well this is going to go, and obviously it might be slightly ruined, um, potentially, if some of my work colleagues are listening to this, because I'm not doing the quiz until next week, so we'll see what, uh, we'll see what happens. There might be a, a few fine tunes come the final... Um, Final, final output maybe. 
So I thought I would ask a question, sim- similar to what we've done in the past. It's 10 questions plus, plus a bonus round as well, because it's a quiz. Got to, got to do a bit of a bonus round for you. And we'll see, uh, see how you do. And then, Jim, I can pick you against my, uh, my colleagues, if that's all right, later on in the week. Yeah, yeah. So first one. What, do, you mean Gary I can, Bold- do you mean I can enter, even though I've done the quiz once already? No, you can't enter. Is it prizes? We could there. split it between us. Uh, well, there's no prize because I'd probably have to provide the prize myself. So. All oh, right, fair enough. Um, so the Gary Boulder biscuit, who is it named after? Is it named after Giuseppe Garibaldi, the man often referred to as the founding father of modern Italy? Or is it named after the head biscuit maker from McVitie's in the 1890s, who was a bald-headed man called Gary? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? I'm pleased to say that I know this one. And the reason I know it is because I, through my work um, at a local university, I have visited a school called the Gary Baldy Academy or school or whatever it is. And it's right. in, I want to say the Nottinghamshire area somewhere. Um, can't quite remember. A while ago now. But I remember thinking, hey, Gary Baldy, that's a biscuit. That's not... <laughs> That's not a school. So I decided that actually there must be more to the name of a Garibaldi biscuit than uh, than what you know than what I what than what I thought it was just a biscuit. No. Yeah. So I, I did do a bit of research and I know that it is after um an Italian was did you say explorer or, or some or um, inventor or something no, like that? It was a politician that he was yeah. often referred to as the found founding father of Italy. I think Italy is a bit of a divided country between north and south, and I don't know if it kinda of needed a bit of you know coming together as a country. Um, so that, that's what he's referred to as. I think that was during the 1870s, something yeah. like that, probably. As, as to why the biscuit got called that, I did I did research that as well, but I can't remember what the... what the, that, That's the main thing I'd want to know, and I've forgotten it, but I do know that yeah. it's, it is, it's, the, it's the first answer. Yeah. Obviously, you did that in the morning, then you went to the digestive yeah. um, <laughs> academy in the afternoon, followed by the rich tea finger in the morning. Uh, <laughs> So, yes, you are, of course, right. Um, so I thought that would be a good one to put in there, because I, I suspect everyone should be able to get that right, you would have thought, but let's, let's see what happens on, the, on Friday. Um, so the word biscuit, where does it actually come from? Well, it comes from, sorry, actually. The bis- word biscuit comes from a French language, but what does it actually mean? I was going to say does something mean... like IL-12, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does, it, does it mean softly baked, or does it mean twice cooked? Ooh. Interesting. Um, softly baked, twice softly cooked. Softly baked or twice cooked. Does a biscuit get twice cooked? I'm trying to work it out, because you could... Yeah, may, uh, maybe twice it, cooked, because it would make sense, because because a biscuit... Like, if you, if, if you was... Oh, no, I don't know, because if you were to bake a cookie... Then it does come. It can come out like a biscuit. That I don't know. Let's go. Let's go twice cooked. Um. Well, you want to just fill in for a bit because I can't remember what the right answer is. I think I might have put the wrong one down on it. Oh, brilliant! Uh, so, I, so here we go. Think... So this is why he's testing it out on the podcast. I know you should do. Yeah. Why don't you, I tell you what? Why don't you test your quizzes out on your on your on your workmates and then come to the podcast and do it properly, Fisher? Why don't you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and then come to you. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to double. I'm going to double check. So what did you say it was? Sorry, Jimbo. I, I thought I, I said in the end it was twice cooked. Twice cooked, rather than softly um, baked. Softly baked. So let's have a. I could have googled have it myself, but that'd be cheating. Well, yeah. As I say, I'm trying to Google it now. Here we go. <laughs> ten facts. Ten facts about biscuits. We don't want ten. We just want this one answer. It means twice cooked. Yay! Well, <laughs> the anticipation was killing me. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I marked it down right, but sometimes with these, I, I spend that long trying to think of fake answers up that it actually comes embedded and I actually think it's right. <laughs> so, yeah, apologies for that. So, yeah, it does mean twice cooked. Okay. Um, That's too hard softly, softly baked, that sounded that plausible to me that I actually thought it was that. So, there we go. Now, this one, I definitely know that I've got the answer for it right. In 2001, September 2001, in fact, a biscuit from where was sold at auction for £3,525. It was described as being in near-perfect condition. Was it from the Titanic's maiden voyage or from the Apollo 11 space mission? 
Uh, have we done this before, maybe? Because we have featured biscuits on uh, on the podcast before. When uh, we we yes, we did it. We did a game of uh, lick. What do what do you call it? Sniff fondle. Or Sniff lick or lick. fondle. Yeah. Um, and we featured biscuits in that. But I also I um, I did not realise that you had spent three thousand five hundred and twenty five pounds on a biscuit. I mean, <laughs> Sniff lick or fondle. <laughs> Well, no, but I also know we did something about things found in space in one episode. So, so just remind me the two possible answers there again. Two possible answers. A biscuit was sold at auction in September 2001 for £3,525. It was described as being in near perfect condition. Where was it from? Was it from the Titanic's maiden voyage and also final voyage? Or was it from the Apollo 11's uh, Apollo 11 space mission? I think it was Apollo 11 space mission. Okay. So, obviously... As you mentioned, we've done things about things found in space, and you will be wrong. <laughs> I thought I were on to a winner this week as well. I thought I might be able to get me 100%, but never mind. Yeah, Two out of three. Yeah. Stephen Wunder saying ain't too bad. Uh, so in 2012, in Broadstairs, Kent, Elliot Allen claimed the world record for breaking digestive biscuits with one karate chop. How many did he break? Is it 19 or 26? Digestive. Now, I'm ass- digestive biscuits. Now, I'm assuming that they were all stacked on top of each other. Would you, would you would have thought would be the correct rules for this? Rather than just doing lots and lots back to back sort of thing. Yeah, I'm assuming it's, what, it's one karate job. Yeah. So I assume it must be stacked up. Bang. How did he manage to snap hmm. in one guy? They're quite small though, aren't they? So it can't, it can't have been easy just because of how small the biscuits are. Mm. Um. Also, I'm, you know, if it had chosen, it'd have been far less than if it, if it had chosen a hobnob, of course, yeah. because they are made of a lot more stronger stuff. So, 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 what was the possible answer? Just remind me again. So, snap, uh, karate chopping a digestive biscuit. Did he manage to do nineteen or twenty-six? Afterwards, he did pink wafers. He stopped, uh, snapped about three hundred of those in one go. I'm trying to think how many there are in a in a pack. I reckon there's probably about 20 in a pack. Depends whether it's a big pack or a little pack, really, doesn't it? Mm. You get 300 gram or aura. Let's go 26 for it to be the, for, for the, to be the more impressive number. Both are impressive, of course, but let's go 26. Uh, no, it's 19. Oh. <laughs> right. Next week's episode, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing 20. Yep, okay. We'll, we'll, fill, we'll see Actually, how we Actually, we'll not go stick out. to that. <laughs> I mean, it might make a bit of a mess of the computers and sound as you get various crumbs in the IT equipment. It, it's but... very wasteful as well when, uh, when obviously, you know, we're, we're going to the shops isn't the easiest thing anymore. We can, I, I don't want to ruin the illusion for you, Jim Bell, but you can still eat them afterwards. <laughs> um, Can't, so not, anyway. not got as much dipping ability when they're smashed into millions of pieces, though. How hard are you going to karate chop them? It almost well, snaps it, enough. It's going to be hard enough, isn't it, to get through, through 20. Yeah, you snap it in half. You don't, you don't grind it down with your fist, do you? <laughs> you, don't, you don't create your own pestle and mortar action between your desk and your, and your karate chop. So anyway, bourbon biscuits were first bought out in 1910. What were they named after? Is it a European royal house who rules France in the 16th century? Or the town of Barben in Cumbria, which is where the biscuit was first invented? Yeah, um... We are quite a biscuity nation, aren't we, in terms of creating things to do with biscuits and cakes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, bourbon does does have a... It, it, the name, the, the word bourbon do, does... It's kind of a universal word, though, as well, isn't it? So you do hear it in other countries as well for other things and so on. Well, the whiskey drink bourbon, I think it's spelled the yeah. same way, isn't it? Spelled yeah. bourbon. Um is that sort of a whiskey that's is it sort of honey based or is it? Is it was, I don't know the differences between that and normal whiskey. Could I'm that, sure could, so could that not be the same place then? The same place it's made bit so because Cumbria is kind of towards Scotland, isn't it? So yeah, uh, let's go with that one. I think it's I think it's the one in Cumbria. Okay, and you'll be wrong. Um, so that was, it was first bought out in 1910. I think it was about the 1930s that it was renamed a Bourbon. I'm not sure it was named for the first 20 years or so. Uh, next up, in the early 2010s, what took about 1,700 rich tea biscuits and around 17 kilograms of chocolate to make? Was it Prince William and Kate Middleton's wedding cake in 2011? 
or a life-size statue of the Queen, especially made for a Diamond Jubilee in 2012. And did the fella try and karate chop that? <laughs> <laughs> it was then promptly arrested and imprisoned in the Tower of London afterwards. Uh, uh, yeah, so early 2000s, it took 1,700 rich tea biscuits to make and around 17 kilos of chocolate. What was it? Was it Prince William and Kate Middleton's wedding cake or a life-size statue of the Queen, especially made for a Diamond Jubilee in 2012? Um, let's. It seems more like a wedding thing than a than a Queen's Jubilee thing. I, I would say. So let's let's go with the wedding. Well, it's interesting that you would say that. I mean, there have only been two queens in the UK who've ever had a diamond jubilee, yeah. as where there've been was it was it millions made, of. What was it made for the queen though? Like, did the queen ask specifically she wanted a rich tea biscuit cake? The queen gets given a lot of stuff she don't want. <laughs> she just has to turn up and say, "Oh, that's very that's very nice." Yes, very well, like nice. Like a prime minister. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so wedding cake, you will be correct. Yay. Um, it was there at Prince William's groom's cake. Okay. So I think at a wedding, um, often it's the case that they will choose a wedding cake, which is normally decided by the women because, you know, they choose everything, don't they? let's be honest. Um, as well, sometimes it is the case that the male will decide on a sort of a, a different type of cake. Um, so he decided for his groom's cake to have sort of some kind of rich tea biscuit type cake uh, covered in chocolate. Okay. Apparently. Um, there we go. Man of the people. <laughs> uh, so, sure, sure, we all had a wedding cake that uh, used 17 kilograms of chocolate in it. Uh, so in 2006, a European culture project called Cafe Europe was organised where each EU country submitted a national cake which was then eaten by eaten in the various European countries on this particular day. What was the entry for the UK? So there was a European-wide project to basically submit sort of a national cake or biscuit in 2006. Belgium, for example, submitted a waffle. Um, what did the UK submit? Was it a custard cream or a shortbread? Oh, again. Oh, this is difficult. See, a custard, a shortbread, you, the, the, wherever you go in, in the UK, there's always a shortbread from that location, isn't there? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, Everywhere, mate. If you're in Scotland, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, anywhere, but... Um, or custard cream. See, maybe shortbread's a bit a bit plain. Not not very interesting. I think, you know, I think maybe they would have gone for something that, that maybe another country hadn't tried and that had a bit more to it. So let's go with the custard cream. Ah, uh, good thinking. Uh, you're wrong, obviously. Oh. Yeah, it was a shortbread, obviously famous, uh, famous export of Scotland. Weren't there at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow in 2014 or 10? Am I right in thinking that there were people dressed as short shortbreads, shortcakes, and various other? Uh, Scottish food. Are you sure, they, are you sure they just weren't really short people? Could have been, yeah. Good point. <laughs> the crankies were there. Um, so, anyway, moving on. So, Paul Thacker from Nottingham made the world's, worst, made the world's biggest custard cream in 2010. It weighed around 16 kilograms. How long was the custard cream? Now, I so, think I think this... this um, I think this question's featured before in our podcast. I think this, the name Paul Thacker and the whole custard cream, biggest one sort of thing, that rings a bell. And, and I'm going to get it wrong, even though it, I've yeah. probably asked the same question to you or, or a version of it or something maybe differently. You want to know how long it was? Are we how long it was, yeah. Feet, metres? Are you going to give me some uh, options? Or? Well, one option is, is, a, is about 23 inches, so just under two feet. And the other option is just under seven metres. So if you were to put that into feet, I think it'd probably be about 24 feet, something like that. Hmm. That's very that's um, big, isn't it? Uh, uh, now, I, I don't know if we're getting confused, because we had the world's longest sausage, didn't we? Made by JJ Tramfield. 
Might have to go back through the archives and find out, but that rings a bell. The name rings a bell. Maybe maybe he bakes lots of different size things. But I'm gonna go Paul Facker, and he went for the he went for the the smaller of the two numbers. About twenty three inches. Yeah, you you'll be correct, Paul. Yeah, it's about two feet, which to me didn't it didn't actually sound that big. I was a bit disappointed. If it's the world's biggest, you could, I think you could quite easily do something a bit bigger. <laughs> I'm not going to go at him, but well, it's just, you yeah, know, I feel that... Lockdown is a boring time. You know, you might as well get the ingredients sorted and we, we can maybe we could do it for the Waste of Web Space podcast. Well, yeah, I was just thinking that if you take all the... Um, if you take all the custard creams in a pack, I wonder how many how many packs you would need to assemble them into something into that, that was 23 size. inches long. Should we do it? I don't... I don't think it was. I think for the next podcast, that might be something. I might have to go and buy some custard creams. Can you can you get the like Aldi special versions or something though instead? Uh, why well, just just so we don't waste them or well, don't, or don't get any don't get any you know proper proper high brand ones, McVitie's or whatever whatever. They get some you know get some of their own you know shop brand ones. Otherwise we run out of money. Well, as I said previously, we will we will eat them afterwards, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, well, I, I wasn't that impressed with it, really, so yeah. there we go. Anyway, next up, do you know who Samuel Johnson is? No. Okay, he was the inventor of the dictionary. All right, okay. So I'll have to look him up sometime. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Joe doesn't really work because he don't actually describe yeah. people in the dictionary. I think he'd be... If he was the inventor of the encyclopedia, then maybe he could, uh, well, he could look him up. Still, it, it was close. Uh, but not, nonetheless... <laughs> How did he describe the biscuit in the first dictionary? Was it a kind of hard, dry bread made to be carried to the sea? It's a bit, or, of, a, it's a bit of a crummy description. Hey, we can, there we go. So, a kind of hard, dry bread made to be carried to the sea, or a long-lasting baked good used as a snack? Um, well, you would imagine it should have been the second one. Because that makes a lot more sense than the first description. So, because of that, I'm going to go for the first description because I reckon this is some sort of trick. Uh, do I do trick questions, Jimbo? Uh, yes, you are right. Good. So, one of the pretty much fi- final question now, then, then I've, got a, I've got a bonus round for you. The final question is, is the Jaffa cake, technically speaking, a cake or a biscuit? Oh, not this old one. Biscuit or cake, which one? I think it was classed as a cake. On what basis do you think it was classed as a cake? Because it's called a Jaffa cake, and there is no... I, I would say that there is no... There are no crumbs in it. There are no, there are no like... There are no what you call... I mean... the. the there are no dried. There's no dry biscuit element to a Jaffa cake, so okay. I would say because of that, it's a cake. Just like I wouldn't okay. call a mini roll a biscuit, or a Swiss you'd call roll. It a roll. I'd call, yeah, it's a bun or a cake. It's a, it's not a it's not a biscuit. So I would say Jaffa cake, in my humble opinion, is not a biscuit. It, despite it can be snacked on. It, it snacked. It, it, you can use it in the same sense as a biscuit in terms of how many you might have in one sitting. Um, so it's maybe not like a cake in that sense, but it, in terms of the texture, the feel, it is a cake, and it's called a cake. Uh, you would be correct. Well done. <laughs> so well done. Um, the reason that it's classed as a cake and not a biscuit is because when it goes stale, um, uh, but yeah, the cake will go hard, as where. When a biscuit goes stale, uh, it goes soft. Um, and I think there's a, a bit of a thing to do with VAT on this. And there's been a case with uh, the Inland Revenue, I think, as it was at the time, now known as HM Revenue and Customs. And they said that if the a cake doesn't attract VAT, as where if it was a chocolate biscuit, which is classed as a luxury item, you would have to pay VAT on it, so it costs more to the customers. Uh, and McVitie's took the Jaffa cake into court. Apparently, they built a, they they made a large Jaffa cake. Oh, I thought it was a large Jaffa cake. Turned out it was only like 23 inches wide. So it wasn't actually <laughs> that big. Um, 
and he took it into court and said, look, we will presumably leave this in court for about four or five days, just leave it on the side, and it will kind of go hard, uh, and therefore it's a cake. Like cakes, when they stay, go stale, will go hard. If it's a biscuit, it will go soft, and that is why it's a cake and not a biscuit. I, you never, I, I don't think I knew... Well, I maybe did hear it had been to court, but I didn't hear that they'd actually gone to the lengths of doing that, but yeah, great lawyers. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, people work for anything nowadays, won't they? <laughs> I wonder if McVitie said, tell you what, instead of instead of actually working for a fee, you can keep that Jaffa cake if you want. They said, no, nah, it's, gone, it's gone stale, mate. It's gone stale, hasn't it? So, um, bonus round time. So, bonus round time. So. I'm ready for it. Okay, so earlier on, I texted you yep. 10 biscuits. Yeah, you did. Now. And I've not the, been able to eat any of them. You've not been able to eat any of them. For the benefit of doubt, for the listeners and our our viewers, I'm going to read out what those 10 biscuits are. Bourbon, chocolate digestive, chocolate hobnob, custard cream, ginger nut, beg your pardon, jammy dodger, jaffa cake, plain digestive, rich tea, and shortbread. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What what is this? What's this quiz about? Biscuits. So what what's jaffa cake doing in there? Well, well, this is. This is that's the joy of why I put that previous um, right, okay. question in there, just right, to yes, okay, I just get, to yeah. confuse and potentially highlight a discrepancy within this. Okay, but according to a survey uh, last year, which is some kind of when I typed into Google UK's most popular biscuits 2019, this was a survey that came up. There is some kind of national biscuit-related survey. Um, I want you to name the top five out of those biscuits. Okay, so which came in the top five? Well, if let's want... let's just say then that let's get Jaffa cake out of there because for one, um, it's it's it, 2019 is obviously after that famous court case. Then, well, if if you want if you want to, if I will confirm that the other ones on that list all came in the top ten. All of them came in the top ten. All of them. So in Jaffa cake 10. was still included in there. Even the cake was in the biscuit list. Well, I'm disappointed. So if I get this wrong, I'm I'm going to be upset because you've just told me that the cake isn't the Jaff cake isn't a biscuit yet. It's included in the top ten. I didn't do the survey. I'm just telling right. you what's, what's legally correct. Oh right, okay. So I'm going to go. Options. I'm, I'm going to go chocolate. Read the options again. No, I've got them all here. Okay. So you want the top five? Top five, yeah. So we've got. I'll remind everyone if you want. Bourbon, chocolate digestive, chocolate hop knob, custard cream, ginger nut, jammy dodger, jam- jaffa cake, plain digestive, rich tea, shortbread. I'm going to go yeah. chocolate digestive. I think I'm going to I'm going to go right out there and say that that's number one. Uh, it's number four, so it's in the top five. So well done. Give yourself a point there. All right, OK, I did think it'd be number one. Um, if that's not number one, then I reckon custard cream's number one. That is number five. So again, in the top five and well done. OK. Um, plain digestive would you, really is it boring isn't it but I mean I suppose they're, I suppose they're flexible you can put your own chocolate on him you can put cheese on him you can put cheese on digestives don't you so let's go plain digestive oh no it's number nine. Ah, oh. surely rich tea can't be in there it's horrible <laughs> it's just so dull hey, they've got a very Prin- weird taste to him Prince William and Kate Middleton had rich tea biscuits as part of their wedding cake. Yeah, but they so just don't they, you know when you eat a rich tea they just like gammy your mouth up, don't they? They just don't they just don't go down right. They're just horrible. Oh, they're horrible. Sticky and yeah. so I'm not gonna have, I'm not going for rich tea. I'm not having it. There's just something wrong with people if there is. Um let's go jammy dodgers in the top five. Oh you're wrong, it's number six. <laughs> oh dear. I I would have I would have put it in there. Oh Bourbon then Bourbon that's number three. Well done. So I've got, I'm, I'm, so, so I haven't got the top two, which you'd think would be the easiest ones. Yeah, so you've got three out of five. I'm not sure if you want to just try and get the top two. You can have two more yeah. guests to try and get the top two. Shortbread. Yes, you are correct. That is number two. And then number so one. Do, do you know what is number one? Oh, this is difficult. Do you know what the options are here? Yeah, I've got the options in front of me. Yeah. I'm going to go ginger nut. No. Oh, you're wrong. No. Don't you dare tell me it was a Jaffa cake. 
It was the Jaffa cake. Jim, no, I'm, not the having it. Irony. I'm not having that. I'm not having that. that. That needs to be taken back. And whoever's done that survey needs sorting out. That's just very Jaffa. misleading. You're gonna have you're gonna have uproar at your at your quiz on Friday. On Friday is it Friday? Next Friday is it? Friday, yeah. Don't don't even go there. Don't do it. Don't don't put these questions in there. You're gonna cause a, a storm. You are. It's just a good I'm job only... you're not doing this quiz in person. There'll be people I'm... shutting down. I am only relaying what actually was voted for. I don't agree with it myself. Don't agree with myself because the chocolate hobnob, a fine biscuit, wasn't even included in the top five. The scandal that is developed from this to be won by a biscuit that isn't even a biscuit it's a cake despite I don't know why I describe it as a biscuit despite the controversy I enjoyed the quiz though Fisher thank, thank you very much thank you very Help much to a biscuit. it's that time of year the sun's beating down the kids are playing in the garden but then you hear the sentence you've been dreading dad can we have the paddling pool out no it's an inflatable nightmare you blow and you blow, but it's just not inflating quick enough. And you're out of breath. <sighs> Don't despair. Save your breath and give Puffin a blow a call. We're at your service for any blow job, big or small. We're environmentally friendly, so don't use compressors or electric pumps. Just a man or a woman with a large lung capacity and a strong set of lips. Just grab a beer, lay back, and we'll do the rest while you watch. We'll even grab your hose pipe and fill up the pool for you afterwards. Puff and a blow. Lips locked blow. Puff and a blow is not to be confused with services advertised in local phone boxes. Puff and a blow would like to apologise to customers who were left quite underwhelmed by our service following a misleading marketing campaign. And as a result, we have terminated the contract with our external marketing company. Sadly, we'd already paid for this advert. So we're on to the news now, Fisher. Um, so we've, we've, we've done quite well today. We're going to be a long episode again, isn't it, this? But don't, don't worry, everybody. We'll not keep you... If, you, if you're really fed up with us now, uh, don't worry. It, we, we, there's not too much more to come. But we are looking at the news now. Is that right? Yeah, we've only got about another two hours left. Um, <laughs> how, long, how long have we been going for, by the way, Jimbo? Nearly we'll an hour. Now. Nearly an hour. Nearly an hour? Nearly an hour. Uh, might be on for a record-length podcast. We keep doing... Av- how can we keep doing longer podcasts each, each and every time? Mine's going to be a very quick fire quiz at the end, so let's not worry. Um, uh, so talking so, about talking about quick firing, um, the government advisor. Oh, what's his name? I can't remember what his name is now. I want to say it's Neil Ferguson, but it could be wrong. So the government advisor who the one who's been un, under a lot of uh, criticism from for for being in meetings he shouldn't have been and stuff like that. Was it not? No, I think he's been under a lot of something else. Actually, <laughs> um, he's. He's been sacked because he came up with the idea of... Oh, sorry, he resigned, probably, actually. He came up with the idea of isolation and lockdown. Uh, do you know what the slight problem was? Yeah. He disobeyed the lockdown rules, didn't he? Right. He was, it, was, it wasn't so much lockdown as it was pants down. <laughs> he, was getting, he was getting his married lover, not married to him, married to someone else, uh, to, come, to come around and visit him. Just for the odd, uh, for a few times a week, you know. I think it was two occasions. She called round to his house, went inside, and then obviously, presumably left with her trousers on back to front. And, uh, <laughs> he has subsequently, uh, subsequently resigned. Yeah, yeah, yet another one. Neil, Neil Ferguson, it was. Neil Ferguson. Um, so it's a good job I didn't confuse him with someone, someone else and libel them. Um, but yeah, he came up with the idea of uh, lockdown and uh, decided to not obey the rules himself. Yet another one. Because. Um, are you getting a bit fed up of seeing a statement released by a sports club saying certain so and so has disobeyed the lockdown rules? This football club or rugby club or whatever has reiterated the social responsibilities that this player should be having and told him off and he's ensured not to do it again. <laughs> and this player apologises for not obeying the lockdown rules. Um, I, I'm getting a little bit annoyed with. Like one, the mixed messages from the government as to what you can and actually can't do, and then two, uh, Jimbo, you yeah, can't say that. People, <laughs> people who uh, and and it's the media as well, but it's also just people on social media who are victimising people for not breaking lockdown rules, but for for just people who are just using their own common sense and thinking, I'm not causing anyone any harm here. I'm not. 
I'm not I'm not in anyone else's vicinity, so I'm going to do this, and I'm, I'm going to be fine with it. So let's go, those people who might go to somewhere for a picnic, out of everybody else's way. They're clearly not surrounded by everyone. They're making sure they're not, you know, maybe they've walked to it. Okay, I don't, I, I, you know, maybe keeping off the road and not driving to places is a sensible sort of rules to follow. But those people yeah. that might be just walking off, trying to find a picnic spot, completely away from everyone else, yet people take photos and put them online and then victimise them, which I think is ridiculous, yet you can stand outside shops only two metres apart from each other queuing for the, sh- the shops. It's all these mixed messages, isn't it? Uh, it, it is. I mean, I think uh, there is a slight nuance to it to some degree. Um, I was intrigued by Kyle Walker, the Manchester City yeah. football player, after he appealed to everyone to stay safe, stay home, <laughs> uh, protect the NHS. He then threw a sex party with him and his friend um, where two sex workers came to his flat and obviously uh, I think he gave him about £2,500 to stay overnight there. Which, to be fair, you think they him, managed to do that social, while social distancing? Well, it, One can only imagine what what uh, what was involved. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, to be fair to him, he was staying at home. <laughs> um, it was just, and he then he got shopped again this week because he's from Sheffield originally. So he'd driven yeah. out from Manchester to Sheffield. I think he visited his mum and his sister, and he was pictured outside of his sister's house giving his sister a hug. Um, and he sort of he, he sort of said he'd been victimised a little bit, but do you not think someone advising him might say to him, right, look, after what you've done. There's just going to be people following you around. Yeah. So don't step out of line again. Yeah. If... At the same time, the journalist who took the pictures of him also wasn't staying at home and saving lives <laughs> either. Instead, they were going around just taking pointless pictures of Kyle Walker. Yeah. Although I suspect that a telephoto lens from further than two, two metres away. Um, but it, it fascinated me that there were some pictures of people in near Warrington, a place called Grappenall, um, which is someone I used to work with, lived near there. And... They were doing a conga, a socially distanced conga. Yeah. Um, if you saw that, they were holding onto a rope that, where they're all, all holding a rope two metres apart. Now, the whole thing about being two metres apart does not mean that if you are two metres and one centimetre away from someone that you're not going to catch coronavirus, and if you're 199 centimetres away from them, you are going to catch it. It's a guide to try and ensure that people actually acknowledge and stay away from each other and it increases your chances of not being in close contact and therefore not catching the mm-hmm. virus. Now, the fact that you all stand in a group of about 100 odd people and dance around. So, for example, you're probably, breathe, you're probably going straight through the air that someone just breathed out. So if someone was to sneeze, then a moment later you'd be going through that. Yeah. So I don't think that's a particularly bright idea either as part of the VE Day celebrations that some people had. No. And obviously the government has got a new slogan. Have you seen that? government I, got a new slogan? I have. Um, well, I, I, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's something about staying alert, isn't it, to control the virus? Stay alert, control the virus, save lives. Well, now, what have they got to stay alert for? It's, it's a virus. Like, it's not going to come well, knocking on your door, is it? Hello. <laughs> I think, well, it could do if it's I'm, Kyle Walker and he's carrying the... <laughs> <laughs> he's paid for it to turn up, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know how big the virus is, but let's be honest, it's sort of the size of a micro... It's, it is exceptionally yeah. small, so you can't see it. So there's nothing to show actually where it is or all that sort of stuff. So staying alert is very difficult. Control the virus, well, I mean, it's, it's killed about a quarter of a million people worldwide, so it's quite a large expectation that I will be able to control it myself. Yeah. Um, so I think it's quite a, a strong demand that the government's put it on us there. Especially when it should have been them in the first place taking quicker action. Uh, and more, making more clearer messaging to, to actually do that in the first place? Uh, well, obviously, I think in, in good time we will have a chance to review it. I can't help notice that we had originally said we were well planned for a pandemic and we've got plenty of stocks. It's now the case that we've got, unfortunately, very, very sadly, according to the official statistics, we've got more people who've passed away in this country from coronavirus than any other country in Europe. Um, even though I think, I think America has got more cases because they do more testing, um, we have, for example, ordered 400,000 items of PPE from Turkey that when when they arrived, it turned out we couldn't even use them because they didn't match British safety standards. Yeah, do you think they were uh, like fake football shirts that they sent over instead? <laughs> you know, like when, you, when you're walking... When you, I mean, I've never been to, to Turkey myself. Uh, not a lot of people have, but you go to other foreign countries, don't you? And they're often selling sort of the knockoff football T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> the, you think they've got people walking around in the NHS with Raoul number seven on the back <laughs> from years ago? <laughs> They thought they, got some, they thought they got safety goals, but just yeah. a pair of Roy Ban sunglasses. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, that, at the same time, I don't. I, 
perhaps Boris Johnson's message should just be, yeah, like how, how we had VE Day not yeah. too long ago. You, you had the great wartime effort of General Kitchener, was it, pointing, mm-hmm. saying your country needs you. Perhaps you should have Boris saying, I've got better from this. So should you as well. <laughs> um, but the, 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 I mean, Boris Johnson has said that he's going to increase testing from 100,000 a day, which we can't actually do 100,000 a day at the moment because not 100,000 people going for testing, uh, to 200,000 people a day. Uh, but I don't know whether that's actually testing for coronavirus or just testing to try and work out which one of the, which people in the UK are actually his children. <laughs> so, a difficult one to try and work out what he's, what he's got planned. Um, so yeah, that's it's, that's been a fairly interesting week for, from the government. Advice has changed. I think we're going to get another statement this evening. Yeah, which which will give us different different Mate, advice. What about if he says no more podcasting? Oh, man, but we're socially distanced. Exactly. Can't catch it. Can't catch it over the internet. That's what we think. Um, so what else has been this going on? This is a quite spongy band? microphone that I left on your doorstep. You don't know what's still being carried in that one, Fisher. Good point. I thought it was sealed in a little plastic bag as well. <laughs> anyway, it was actually, wasn't it? So, uh, anyway, um, yeah, Andy Serkis. So he's the actor who played Gollum in the uh, Lord of the Rings films. He's been uh, reading The Hobbit full online live for charity, raising money for... Um, the NHS, uh, mixed charities for the NHS and so on. Um, and yeah, he's, he's doing really well. He's raised quite a lot of money doing that, but it's, a, it's like a proper readathon because obviously they're quite long books. It's taken a, a long time to do that. So, you know, for anyone to actually tune in, it must be a bit of a, a challenge as well to sit there and listen to him for that long. But maybe people just dipping in and out of it. I'm not 100% sure. But I thought that's a great idea and I thought we could do something like that on the Waste of Web Space podcast. So obviously he's reading, a, uh, he's reading a, one of the, you know, people might say is one of the greatest novels of all time. Um, so I thought I would do the same, and I'd read uh, one of the greatest novels of all time. We've got time time for that on the podcast? I know we're over and already. Yeah, which which Mr. Men book is it? Well, it's not Mr. Men, but yeah, they're one of the greatest novels of all time, so I thought I'd do one as well. So, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, <laughs> and the earth was, what's the matter? Well, I meant to that, Jimba. Okay, should we move on? Uh, yes, let's go on. Okay. Uh, so that was Andy Serkis. Uh, next then, Prince Charles. So he's uh, oh, it, he's been a nice fella, hasn't he, recently? Uh, he was on the TV on Friday. He laid a wreath near Balmoral. Um, it's kind of leading the national effort yeah. in terms of sort of commemorating 75 years since the year day. Uh, and also it was in the news this morning because he was... He'd written a letter of thanks to postal workers in the UK... And he left it outside his front door. Uh, now, I can't help but think that he probably doesn't quite know how the postal system works in the UK, does he? Because no. he's, that's not how you post a letter. You don't leave it outside your house for the postman to pick it up. You have to go and put it in a letterbox. You know, the postman will come and deliver letters. They don't pick them up from you. <laughs> I mean, talk about, talk about being out of touch with real life. I mean, Gordon Bennett. And this, is, this is why people get the royalties back, isn't it? Because, uh, you yeah. know, they're just, they're just not with it, are they, in terms of yeah. a real life anyway? So, just because he, think, just because he thinks it's, it's called Royal Mail, <laughs> he thinks it's really especially just for him. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But good on him anyway for thanking the, uh, the postal workers. Um, so shall we go from, from one bit of royalty to another? This is quite a nice link. So we've gone yeah, from go Prince Charles. What about Queen? And in particular, Queen's Brian May, um, who was in the news. Uh, there's something, you know, we're, we're constantly looking for things that aren't coronavirus because it's obviously what everything's full of at the minute. Looking through for news stories and then beautifully pops up. Queen's Brian May rips glutes while gardening. <laughs> it's nice to imagine right. gra- by Brian May gardening anyway, isn't it? You know, just, just you know away from the stage, not rocking away, but, you know, doing his gardening. So he's, he's ripped his glutes while gardening. So it's a, a garden mishap during lockdown. Uh, his quote is, I managed to rip my gluteus maximus to shreds, which is basically his arse, um, in a oh. moment of over-enthusiastic gardening. So maybe he was trying to play the guitar while gardening or something, because he just used to get quite into that, doesn't he? Maybe he had the yeah, spade well, and he was going, <laughs> I don't know. So I, I just had to double check exactly where the glute muscle was. So uh, yeah. do, do, do you want to say the story again, Jimba? It's you want me to do it again? Yeah, let, 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 let's let's just let's just introduce the story again. Queen's Brian May rips glutes while gardening. Well, that sounds like a real pain in the ass. Hey, there you go. Hold on, hold on a minute. I, I wasn't ready. There we go. Well, of course, it's just a case of another bum that bites the dust, isn't it? 
<laughs> but uh, of course, yeah. Um, he, so he, he's obviously had an incident while gardening. He's, he's fell over as well. He's got mud on his face. Big disgrace. <laughs> Kicked his watering can all over the place. So that led me on to think, um, so Brian May's had that incident. How many other incidents have there been where, where celebrities have had sort of embarrassing incidents where they've, they've had a, an unusually strange incident that's resulted in a, in a strange accident? So do you want to play a little game? Of course, yeah. Okay, so I've got 10 questions about some celebrities who got a unfortunate accident or injury through uh, doing something maybe a bit silly or a bit unexpected or whatever, something like that. Uh, so are you ready? See how many you can get right out of 10? Yeah, can nice be. Nice round I number. Think just before we start, uh, is it worth saying that uh, Brian May obviously ripped his gluteus maximus, but wasn't that the name of the character that Russell Crowe played in uh, Gladiator? I, I think it might have been, Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, let's, let's start anyway, Jim. Yeah, anyway, um, so, um, yeah, Brian May did, did that, so I thought I'd find 10 more celebrities who've had uh, embarrassing incidents, okay? So, who caught, who caught themselves on camera falling off a hoverboard in 2015? Now, a hoverboard, obviously, they're not properly being invented. They're like these kind of, yeah. they're like hoverboards, but they're actually on wheels, so they're not really hovering. But they're quite a new sort of thing, aren't they, in the last so many years? Uh, yeah. Do you want do you want multiple choice here, or do you do you, do you want to go with it? Do you know the answer um, already? I, I don't know. I, are, we, are we talking sort of celebrities that I'm likely to know, or is it going to be someone from May in Chelsea, or is it? No, no, the the, the people that you're likely to know. So for for this particular um, question, in, uh, which I can give you multiple choice if you want, um, well, or so I'll, have, I'll have a guess first up, and I'll say Mark Wahlberg. No. Go. Do you want your multiple choice now? That's a bit harsh just to buzz me out. I'm not supposed to know <laughs> why, why, why that. Mark, multiple choice. Why Mark Wahlberg then? Is there any reason for that? Uh, I he, think it might be something he can schedule into his diary that we've uh, well, talked about in the past. Exactly. I was thinking maybe he's not got time to be messing about on hoverboards because he has. Yeah. He, he spends about two hours in the shower, doesn't he, from, from what we found about his schedule that time? Yeah, well, I, I thought it was a bit old for that kind of stuff, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, apparently he does. So let's have the multiple choice. Okay, so A... Was it Mark Tyson who caught themselves on camera falling off a hoverboard in 2015, or was it B, Rylan Clark? Oh, um, I, can't, I, I can't imagine Mike Tyson would, um, would use a hoverboard, because doesn't he like own a tiger and all that sort of stuff, Mike Tyson? Um, that doesn't mean you can't not own a hoverboard? Hoverboard as well. Yeah, well, the, the two things, you never see them in the wild together. It's like lions yeah. and tigers, one's in... <laughs> One's in Asia, one's in Africa. Well, unfortunately, hoverboards only exist in America and tigers here. Um, I, uh, Rylan, it, it, it sounds like the kind of thing that Rylan would do, so I'm going to say Rylan. No. Um, before the show, we did a bit of testing to see if we could share the screen so I could actually show you the video. Uh, but we're not going to do it on this occasion because it's a bit sticky, so I thought, not bother, we'll, we'll try that in a future episode. But yeah, if you want to YouTube it, yeah, there's a really good video of Mike Tyson falling off his... Uh, it's hoverboard. I think it's just after Christmas when he obviously one of the new presents they'd got or whatever. But it's funny, and he posted it on his own Instagram, so he did find it funny himself. But it's it's funny because it cuts off the moment he hits the deck, which is even the funniest <laughs> thing about it. You don't really see the aftermath. You just see you just see him hitting the floor. It's really good if you get a chance to watch it. Number two, then Hilary Swank. You know who Hilary Swank is? Uh, yes, yeah, she's a Hollywood actress. Was she in Million Dollar Baby? Yeah, uh, she was also in P.S. I Love You. And Hilary Swank uh, had to be treated and given stitches for a facial injury in 2006, 2007 sort of time while on the set of P.S. I Love You. Why was this? Was it A, because while recording an intimate scene with Gerard Butler, his chain he was we wearing round his neck caught and ripped the skin on her lip? Or is it B, Gerard Butler accidentally hit her in the face with a pair of suspenders? <laughs> um... By suspenders, what do you mean? Well, like, the clothes, aren't they? Like the, the Is it the, the ladies' stockings or yeah. sort of the... Well, I didn't know whether in America the, yeah, the belt, uh, the, the braces... No, I, I, I think it would be ladies' stockings, I imagine. Okay. Um, well, I don't know why I was wearing ladies' stockings anyway, but... Uh, <laughs> it might yeah, not be whatever. his. Yeah, oh, okay, fair enough. I'm not Gerald Butler gets up to in his spare time. Uh, he used to I, be a lawyer, do you know? He was a qualified lawyer. 
was he? He was. Uh, he well, probably I, needed I prob- one after that. I, yeah. So I probably shouldn't insinuate that he was wearing the women's underwear then, should I? <laughs> um, I, I think that it was probably his chain that was wearing cut her on the lip. Or cut her on the... Cut, both, the both wrong so far. No, it was... Uh, yeah, he got... It, it was um, a pair of suspenders that he was throwing around or whatever. I'm not sure why, but anyway. Uh, number three. While filming, along came Polly. What happened to Ben Stiller? A, he was hit by imitation an imitation taxi door opening... Um, so they were opening the door, resulting in quite a bad knee injury for Ben Stiller. Or B, he was bit on the chin um, by a co-star. Uh, well, was the co-star a parrot? Uh, I can tell you that he had to have a tetanus shot afterwards, if it is that answer. All right, okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know the film, but it's a long came Polly, a film about that contains a parrot. I, I, I've never the seen the film or... myself, to be honest. Right, okay. Um, tetanus shot. Obviously, I a fake taxi door hit him on the knee. So I think obviously that's a scene where someone presumably opens the door and they're not expecting to be there. But you should. Is it the Dutch lean you should do when opening the door? Is that right? Possibly. Yeah. To watch out for people coming. Mm. Um, I I think he got hit and he got hit on the knee by a door, a taxi door. <laughs> You're doing worse than I normally do. Three All wrong. three wrong so far. So, yeah, he was bit on the chin by a co-star, and he had to have a tetanus shot afterwards, and it was a ferret. So he does have a oh. ferret in the film, and, uh, yeah, it uh, got a bit cheeky, and it bit him on the chin. So there you go. Um on the chin? Yeah, on the chin. Dogs like to go for your faces and stuff, don't they? Anyway, number four, which of these has happened to Ed Sheeran? A, he was caught in the face by a sword by Pin- Princess Beatrice, who was pretending to knight James Blunt. Or B, while filming one of his music videos, a lighting prop collapsed and fell onto his head, causing minor cuts and bruises. Well, light, lighting props are quite big, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be impressed if it sort of hit him on the head and it only caused a minor injury. Not unless all they got was sort of a little, you know... It, it depends what... A, a torch. depends. It can get smaller. Sm- it depends how what it is you're doing. Like, if it's in a yeah. studio, a lighting prop's huge. But if it's something for filming out on location, it might be a lot mm-hmm. smaller. So... Yeah, um, I think I think I actually remember hearing this, and that he was at a party of some form, and Princess was it Beatrice or Eugenie? Beatrice. Was Prince, uh, Princess Beatrice, um, not to be confused with Princess Beatrix, who was too busy balancing some pint glasses on her head. <laughs> uh, she pretended to blunt uh, to blunt to to knight James Blunt <laughs> and. Caught Ed Sheeran in the face with a sword. Happens, happens all the time. Well, fortunately, it was blunt. <laughs> well done. You finally off the mark. That is the correct answer. So yeah, it, she was. Uh, she did manage to catch uh, Ed Sheeran in the face with a sword, pretending to knight James Blunt. Um, so I, I don't I, see when I read the story, I didn't know if if Ed Sheeran was pretending to be James Blunt or whether James Blunt was there at the same time. I imagine James Blunt was there as well. I imagine. That- that, from reading the story that at the time, that was my understanding of it as well. I mean, it's just a good job she's not. Uh, she's never going to have that responsibility, I suppose, isn't it? Well, we don't think she will anyway. Well, you never know. Or would you she? never know. That's why the royal family can't travel together at times, isn't it? Yeah, true. Um, it, so the next one then, number five, Zac Efron suffered quite a serious injury in 2013 after what happened. A, he slipped in a puddle outside his home in LA, resulting in a broken jaw. Or B, he jumped on a glass bottle at a barbecue and cut his foot open. Um, he slipped in a puddle, did you say? I mean, a puddle. I, mean, I can't, I can't really criticise too much because obviously last week I talked about falling in the pile of child's sick. But I <laughs> um, did it with childs. Well, that, I'm assuming it was a child. I mean, it's probably more likely to be well, sick. You've, than you've been, you've been sick in places before, bins and what have you. I always manage to get it in the bin. <laughs> I did it at Alton Towers, did it at Chapel Town Railway Station. Always get it in the bin. Not just <laughs> out and about in public. It goes in the bin. Um, there's nothing to be proud of, but it's better than being <laughs> sick on the floor, isn't it? Um, so, did he cut his foot on a glass bottle at a barbecue? I think I think that's more likely, because I think you'll be more likely to not wear shoes at a barbecue if it's nice weather, so I think he could have cut his foot on a glass bottle. You're back on the wrong answers, I'm afraid. So still only one out of uh, 
one, one out, out of five, five, really. So, yeah, uh, no, he, he, he fell in a puddle outside of his home in LA. Not sure how that happened, but yeah, ended up in a broken jaw and he had to have it pinned and everything. Um, so, there you go. Uh, number six. Now, I, I, I started looking to see if any footballers have done anything, and actually, there's a lot of funny. Um, misdemeanors with footballs now they've ended up injured and so on so i'm going to maybe do another quiz another day about that but i have featured one footballer so richard wright while at the time of being everton goalkeeper was once ruled out of a game because a he fell through the roof of his home and injured his shoulder while trying to pack his suitcases away in the loft b during the warm-up of a game he ignored a sign in the goal mouth telling him not not to warm up in the goal mouth um, and to use the temporary goals instead that they put out but instead, he ignored it and then continued to warm up in the net, but fell over that exact sign, twisting his ankle, and then ruled him out of the game. Uh, I think... Richard Wright, it, he doesn't still play for Man City, does he? He's, um, no, I don't Scott Carson. So, yeah. he, he was at Man City for a while. Um, Scott Carson's their third-choice keeper, isn't he? Who just sits there and gets paid a load of money and never plays. Um, I, I do remember this, because I think I actually researched this when I was trying to do a quiz myself. I think it was at Richard Wright fell over a sign saying don't train here and ruled himself out of the game well you would be correct and do you want to say b as well uh b b sorry oh, yes. and a a because a would oh. also be correct all oh, right okay. so on this question you couldn't have got it wrong so there you go you've got now well, got two out of six to be fair, i'm surprised i didn't <laughs> so yeah he did both of those things so he's had a couple of peculiar injuries as richard right but i will do another one about footballers in the future Number seven, Ariana Grande, I think that's how you say her name, broke her toe at home. What did she do? A, she fell through the side of her, uh, the side of her home trampoline at a family's party. So you know where the sort of gaps are in a trampoline and yep. she broke her toe. Or B, she slipped in her dog's wee. <laughs> hey, how did she know it was a dog's wee? I mean, you put me <laughs> up for the child sick and adult sick. Could have been anyone's wee. Um, oh, did she fall through? Trampolines, I think, are quite dangerous. I mean, I've never... Never particularly used trampoline myself that much. Um, the, well, actually, the only time I was... The, the most recent time I was on a trampoline, I ended up with a broken finger, which uh, I'm not sure if you can see do, that on shot. Do you remember when um, we were on the, uh, the, the the big inflatable snowman bouncy castle in Rotherham Town Centre? I was going to say that, yeah. We went into <laughs> an inflatable bouncy castle in Rotherham Town Centre, didn't we, years ago? You didn't really uh, like it, did you? No, no. I, 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 surprised you weren't sick, I was surprised you weren't sick in a bin on that occasion as well. In fact, I bet you were very close to being sick that day, weren't you? I felt very, very hot um, <laughs> because we went in. I mean, you kind of entered almost through the through the bottom of this yeah. uh, particular inflatable snowman, and it was quite. I think it was quite a cold day, but it was quite hot inside. Because obviously, presumably, the air they blowing was yeah. hot air by the looks of it. Um, I think we were both wearing our coats and scarves yeah. and woolly hats, and it was very, very hot. <laughs> and after bouncing around with for about five minutes inside the snowman, when we got out, I was very red faced and sweaty and felt a bit. Um, you were off colour, weren't you? Yeah. Felt as though that maybe it wasn't the wisest thing to have done <laughs> um, over the last three or four minutes. So I do remember that, yes. And that's probably another thing that has <laughs> tempered my enjoyment of sort of trampolining and bouncy castles and other stuff in recent years. Um, so I think I think she might have fallen through the... So all the options, sorry. Slipped on a dog's wee. Yeah, or and fallen fell through the side the trampoline. or the gap in the trampoline, yeah. I think it's a really real risk. So I'd like to think it. Well, I don't like to think she get injured at all, but I think it could be the um, trampoline. <laughs> You're really struggling today. No, she actually did slip in a dog's wee at home and uh, broke a toe. Apparently, so there you go. Always clean up after your dog, even in your own home. Well, you should always clean up after your dog. Obviously, you don't want dog wee everywhere, do you? Um, next then, uh, number eight. This one is. So, what happened to Halle Berry uh, while filming the James Bond film Die Another Day? A, she started to choke on a piece of fruit. Piers Brosnan noticed and hit her on the back a few times to dislodge the fruit. B, she got stuck in one of James Bond's cars, which are obviously only prototypes, and the door became stuck, and it took 30 minutes to get it open without damaging the expensive prop. Hmm. Um, I'm sure we've all had stories where we've been locked inside a car back, and you've got to try and work out how to get in or climb out to the boot and all that sort of stuff. Um... Or was she? Did she? I mean, Piers Brosnan. Wouldn't you have thought they'd keep it in the film if she'd have choked <laughs> on a bit of fruit and Piers Brosnan dressed as James Bond yeah. made to save her by slapping her on the back and doing the. Well, the funny so, thing. Well, Piers Brosnan is actually in another film 
before this one, uh, Miss Doubtfire, and he actually is choking on, on some food in Miss Doubtfire. And if you remember the scene, she jumps over. You've never seen the film? Oh, you really should watch it. He... I've seen bits of the film. I never realised Piers Brosnan was in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's in it. He's, he's, he's the, uh, the new partner of, of Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams' uh, right. ex-wife or whatever. But, yeah, he jumps at Miss Doubtfire, launches herself himself over the tables and gets to Piers Brosnan and then helps him dislodge the uh, bit of pepper because he's allergic to something and he's choking on it. So, yeah. In terms of Piers Brosnan's acting, I, I watched him in the original Mamma Mia film and vowed never to, <laughs> having heard him sing, never to watch him in another film again, really. Um, well, he's not I mean, usually why, a singer, is he, I suppose, but... Well, no, but you'd have thought so, a sound engineer somewhere in the world might have been able to do something yeah. with it, which involved overdubbing or yeah. not having him sing him. In the same token that I think we mentioned the Queen film a couple of times, <laughs> it wasn't... I don't think it was Rami Malek doing the singing, yeah. it was sort of a blender between his voice, Freddie Mercury's voice, and a Canadian, Canadian yeah. rock singer who got involved in it as well. Um, so, what are the options? Piece of fruit or stuck in a car that was actually a prop and didn't yeah. want to damage it. Uh, I think I think she got stuck in a car that was a prop and didn't want to damage it and took half an hour to get her out. <laughs> No, uh, it was. She actually was started choking on a bit of fruit and Piers Brosnan came to the rescue. Uh, number nine, Strictly Come Dancing. See, you've still only got two, haven't you, out of out of eight? Strictly Come Dancing. Well, Pro Dan, is that right? Of, and one of them you couldn't have got wrong. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, I did, actually, I did actually know that one, though. All right, okay. Uh, number nine, Strictly Come Dancing, Pro Dancer, Diane Buswell. Uh, back in February, recently hurt her ankle at home. Doing what? A, was she filming a TikTok video where she would... Uh, make it look like she was a genie climbing into a lamp and then fell off a bed. Or B, was she moving her fridge freezer to clean behind it and fell and it fell forward, crushing her ankle, and she wasn't able to get out from under the fridge freezer for 20 minutes uh, until her partner returned home. But fortunately, she had a bag of frozen peas to hand. <laughs> Good point. Um, oh, I, I don't know. So she goes out with Joe Sugg, I think, doesn't she? YouTube, YouTuber. If you knew that. No, I didn't know that. No, ah, okay. Did you ever watch Strictly Come Dancing? Uh, not really, no. Okay. Um, there was a big story on, on that particular series as to whether or not those two were ah, kind of okay. spending a bit more time with each other other than just dancing. And I don't think they really said anything on the show, but it turned out obviously afterwards that they, they were. definitely were. Okay. Just, they, now, they now live together. Um, so was she... Did she? Why, why would a fridge freezer drop on her foot? She was trying to clean I mean, behind it. Well, I, I've regularly tried to clean behind fridge freezers without dropping it on my foot. Um, you just you just wiggle it, don't you, really? Just move you, it to the thought, side and it'll be there. You'd have thought you'd have been quite good at that, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd have to swizzle it round. And to... Perhaps you got a feather duster and was properly yeah. doing the ceiling first. And yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, I think the other option, doing a TikTok video, which is very popular, isn't it, nowadays? Yeah. But the fact it's very popular... Um, means that it's more well, probably less likely to be correct. Well, then you put in the joke about the frozen peas. So was that was the whole freezer thing? I'm trying to overanalyze it because you know I've <laughs> got everything wrong so far. So I think there's merits to both, and I think probably could be either one of them. Can't can't take that answer. Uh, I'm gonna go that she crushed her foot with a freezer. be the worst anyone's ever done a quiz even me even me in fact i think if you get the next one right maybe you'll you'll draw level with any worst performance that i've had i think so yeah she uh, did a tiktok video and you can see this on youtube as well where she was trying to pretend to be a genie climbing to the lamp to genie in a bottle by christina aguilera and it went wrong she fell off the bed and she hurt her ankle not too badly to be honest so it, it was i was half wondering whether i should even include it because it was just a scratch basically um next oh, bothered if are we? yeah 10 theo campbell do you know Theo Campbell? He is. Is a he, was he on Love Island? Yeah, there you go. I knew it. I put this one in just yeah. for you. So he was on ITV's Love Island. Don't know what season because obviously it's not something I particularly watch very closely. Unlike Fisher, who's our sort of a Love Island correspondent every year that it's on. Um, so it's, it's been cancelled as well, hasn't it? I think for next year. Uh, it has. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, it's been cancelled. Um, well, for this year. So fortunately, they had the um, winter series sort of during January, February time. So we have had, had a bit of love, had, have had a bit of Love Island this year, which is good. Uh, but the summer series, which normally takes place in Mallorca, it's not happening. 
No. Never mind. Well, that's my application. Uh, I've put my application in next time then. Do anyway. you know, you know what's going to be on it this year as well? Go on. Chris Whitty, the government scientist. He's not going to have anything <laughs> to do come the summer. So he's a bit of a celebrity now. They're going to get him in there. Um, going to be on all of them. going to be on all of them. It's going to be on strictly, you name it, that SSS, SAS, <laughs> who dares wins. He's going to be on that. He's a really popular person nowadays. So what did Theo Campbell do then uh, while he was on holiday in Ibiza? A, he was poked in the eye accidentally by a glow stick, which then broke into his eye. Uh, or B, a champagne cork hit him in the eye. Uh, well, I was, what I was hoping is you were going to say, one th- I, I know that he's blind in one eye due to an accident. So I was rather hoping that one of them was going to involve, you know, him breaking a finger or it, uh, you know, in his knee. And then that would lead me to... See, I, to... I, didn't, I didn't know whether he'd actually lost his sight completely. I knew he'd lost it temporarily, but does it sound like he's actually, it was actually serious and he lost his eye, sight completely in one eye? I believe so. I think oh. it's if it's not if it's not completely mm. uh, if you're not completely lost his sight, I think he has quite heavily damaged it. Um, that's uh, as far as I, I don't take that much interest into Love Island stuff. Obviously, um, that's a lie. I definitely do. <laughs> um, it's I think I, I, a glow stick. I mean, it'd be dark as well, so it'd be add extra danger. We poke himself in the eye with a glow stick. I think that'd be a bit of a silly thing to do. As where a champagne cork, you, you do. I do sometimes think it's quite dangerous, isn't it? When the champagne cork goes out and flies across the room. So I was at, I was they at a quite, They are like quite ago. light. They aren't. They're only like you know. They're not. They're not. Uh, very, they're not made of much, are they? Really? Well, made of cork, obviously, but yeah. um, they. I, I was at a wedding a few years ago, and it was. But someone opened Fisher, some champagne. For God's sake, put a cork in it. We're uh, hey. we're now in half into podcast here. I'm joking. Anyway. Carry on. They opened the, sh- they opened the champagne cork. The cork. I could see the cork fly across the room and it knocks over someone's drink on the other side of the room. And this person who had got no idea quite what had happened, I don't think they actually saw the cork either. So all they saw was a drink just get knocked over and then, yeah. then they went. <laughs> it, it, was, it was like Trigger when Del Boy fell through the yeah. rock kind of thing. What, what, what's happened there? So I think that I think that a champagne cork might have been opened, hopefully, by someone else. Hopefully, he's not that stupid twist himself in the face with a champagne cork. Opened by someone else, shot across, hit him in the eye, and he lost his sight because of that. So, don't like the applauding at the fact that he's lost his sight, but uh, well done, yeah. that is the correct answer. So I think you've possibly drawn level with one of my ever worse scores, three out of ten. Three out of ten. So that was quite important yeah. that you got that one right, but well done. So there you go, that was uh, celebrities who have had some freak incidents or accidents or injuries uh, and that kind of follows on from the kind of Brian May stuff who uh, hurt his glutes uh, or his arse early this week uh, doing his gardening so there you go that's, did you like that that's how he claimed he did it yeah uh, yes it was, it was very good fun thank you <laughs> Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we've got time for. That That is definitely going to take the record of our w- uh, longest podcast ever. I think our intro were about 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. Before you said longest podcast, I thought you almost said worse than... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a Freudian slip, Jimbo. Yeah. Um, so, yes, it's probably our longest podcast, but there we go. We're, sometimes you can't put a, you can't put a cap can't. on natural nonsense. No. Um, have we had much feedback from listeners at all? Uh, we've had we yeah, I think I think I think we had a very positive episode last week, didn't we? Because uh, we we obviously promoted our our podcast in the uh, rocks groups on Facebook, so we've had a lot of watches, a lot of views. People tend to be viewing a lot on Facebook uh, on Facebook these days. It tends to be one of our popular, more popular platforms now that we are video based as well as um, online on most podcasting services as well as YouTube and things like that. Uh, so feel yeah. free to get in touch. We will always give you a shout out in the podcast where we can. Uh, we had somebody called C- Cassandra Brown get in touch and said uh, this is she said this is hilarious and shared it a couple of times. Uh, we had uh, Cassandra Brown. We know from school, don't we? We do, yeah, we do. Uh, I think somebody else commented, didn't they, on uh, on your your wife's Facebook as well, saying that they've they've checked out a few of our episodes and it's very different, which I think is positive feedback. Yeah, I mean, it's not the news, is it? It's not. So, <laughs> yeah, we're not kind of. Yeah, we'll we'll take different. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with that. It's a, good to be different. But anyway, uh, yeah. shall I play us out? Let's play us out, Jimbo. Thank don't, you very much, and we'll see you next week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and everywhere else as well, Instagram as well. So we'll keep putting things on Instagram, so check that one out too. Thanks for listening. See you next week. 
we'll meet again. We'll meet again. Probably online on Zoom again. But I know we'll meet again some sunny.